So, Rick wants to become a famous chef, but the cooking school only accepts applicants over 18. Rick's brother Jeff is twice older than Rick. Rick's sister Ruth is twice younger than Jeff. She turned 18 this year. So, Sherlock, can Rick apply for his dream school this year? Yep, he's 18 years old. Rick and Ruth are of the same age because they're twins. Rick has prepared all papers for the cooking school, but he still needs to get some work experience and recommendations to get accepted. He found three job ads. Bill has a small diner on the fourth floor of the local shopping mall. He needs help in the kitchen. Holly offers a part-time internship at her fancy sushi restaurant. But first, you need to pay $300 for a two-week training. Sam needs an assistant in his noodle shop. Now, only one of these offers isn't fake. Can you tell which one? Hmm, there's no fourth floor in this shopping mall. Holly's picture is hanging on the window of the restaurant, and it says scammer. So Rick should choose Sam. Sam liked Rick's skills and CV, but he wanted to test his intelligence before hiring him. That's why he gave Rick this list of ingredients and asked him to bring them from the pantry of the cafe. Unfortunately, Sam coded this list. Can you help Rick find all the products? Here's the first ingredient. I always try to catch up with my buddy Mustard. What am I? Have you guessed? It's ketchup. Here's the next one. My closest friend is peanut butter. What am I? The second ingredient is jelly. I'm a nut that is only delicious when fried or baked. What am I? Have you guessed? It's a donut. I am a bird, I am a fruit, and I am a person at the same time. What am I? A kiwi. I go along with most veggies and snacks beside me. What am I? I'm a dip. (laughs) It's nothing personal. I'm a cup that doesn't hold any water. What am I? I'm talking about a cupcake here. A little pool with two layers of water around it. One is white and soft, and the other is dark and hard amidst a light brown grassy lawn with an outline of green grass. What's that all about? It's a coconut. It's hard to get a smooth bite, and you can chew me for a long time if I'm too dry. What am I? And the correct answer is jerky. I'm a green veggie that looks like a tiny tree. What am I? Can you guess? I'm broccoli. A time when they're green, a time when they're brown. But both of these times cause me to frown. But just in between, for a very short while, they're perfect in yellow and cause me to smile. What are they? Well, I'm sure you've guessed it's all about grapes. People confuse me with a vegetable, but I'm actually a fruit. I'm red when I'm ripe, and I'm sliced and served on burgers. What am I? A tomato or tomato? 
I'm the type of room you cannot enter or leave. I raise from the ground below. I can be poisonous or a delicious treat. What am I? Can you guess? All of this is about a mushroom. You throw away my outside and you cook my inside. Then you eat me from the outside and throw away what's inside. What am I? The correct answer is corn. I'm the kind of food that mummies like to eat. What am I? It's a wrap. Oh, really? Time for the final ingredient. I wear a red coat and have a stone inside my throat. Who am I? I'm a cherry. Hey, great job. Rick has brought all the ingredients. Sam hired him right away and asked him to take orders. Rick saw three customers in the cafe, but only one of them was a real human. Can you spot who exactly it was? This woman has gills just like a fish. She's a mermaid. And this guy's wearing trousers instead of a shirt, and he's trying to pay with shells. It's pretty clear he's not from this planet. Someone had stolen a tip box from Sam's Cafe. The police arrived almost at once. Rick said that he could only see the back of the robber. He knew it was a woman. The next day, another robbery took place. But this time, the guard managed to block the exit. The police arrived in a minute. They saw four women in the cafe. Can you tell who the thief was? It was Pam. She's the only one whose shoes are good enough for running. The police nearly arrested Pam, but she managed to escape. Rick ran after her and noticed she snuck into a school. Rick followed her. He noticed Pam's hoodie by one of the doors, so he entered the classroom. Rick faced four ladies who looked like Pam. Can you help him find the real Pam? There she is. She has neither books nor pens on her desk. Two months later, Sam gave Rick a good recommendation. Rick applied for cooking school, and now he has to take some exams. Rick's current task is to cook a delicious soup. Three pretty ladies are taking the same test with him. He liked them equally, but only one of them was trustworthy. Can you tell which one? Jenny has a bottle of poison in her spices collection. Fiona put pushpins in her soup. It's very suspicious as well. Kelly didn't do anything wrong. She looks pretty reliable. After the soup test, Rick got a new task. He must tell which cupcake is in the very center of the tray. Can you help him? It's the pink one. Here's the next task. Which macaroon is in the very center? The purple one. Great job! What about this tray? Can you tell which cookie is in the very center? Ah, this one! Rick invited Kelly for dinner. It was their first date. He wanted to impress her and made dinner himself. He left all dishes in the kitchen and went upstairs to take a shower before Kelly's arrival. When Rick returned to the kitchen, he found that someone had eaten all the food. He questioned three suspects. Ruth said, I'm on a diet. I don't eat after 5 p.m. Rick's dad said, I've spent the entire evening outdoors removing dry leaves from the roof. Rick's brother Jeff said, Bro, I've been training all day. 
the marathon is scheduled for tomorrow. Who's lying? Rick's dad. The roof is still covered with leaves. And Rick's dad is a pig. Kelly offered Rick to go for a picnic in the park. They found three cozy spots. But only one of them is safe. Can you tell which one? There's a cougar hiding in this tree. Not the safest company for the picnic. And there are snakes in the grass. So the guy should choose the second option. Rick and Kelly had a conversation about the future. Rick confessed that he wanted to open his own restaurant. Kelly wanted the same. Suddenly, a creepy witch appeared in front of them. She said, Young people, I'll give you money for your restaurant if you manage to solve my riddle. The two agreed. She asked, What hatches without food? In a minute, the witch gave them a suitcase full of fresh crispy dollars. What did they say? The correct answer is hunger. Rick and Kelly ran home, but they got lost in the park. They walked in circles for several hours and got very tired. Finally, they found the gates. But the park's guard had already locked them because it was very late. The gates had a combination lock with nine multicolored buttons. Can you help the two guess this code? Pay attention to the color of the lanterns in the park. This is a hint. To open the gates, the friends need to click on the red, yellow, and purple buttons. Now, Rick and Kelly are business partners. They need to find a space for the restaurant. So they hired an agent who offered them these three options. Can you help them make the best choice? The second space is located next to a factory that poisons the air. Probably not the best place to start a restaurant. Have you noticed this sign? A construction company will demolish the third building in two weeks. This deal is a scam. So, they should choose the first place. It's located on a crowded street and looks pretty reliable. Rick and Kelly invited friends and journalists to celebrate the opening of their restaurant. They served delicious meals and drinks. Suddenly, one of the guests, Peter, fainted. A lady from the crowd yelled, Move on! I'm a doctor! She examined Peter and concluded that he had been poisoned. Peter ate the same food as everyone else. Later, food tests found no toxins. Rick questioned three suspects. Tyler, the cook, said, I checked all the food myself, and it was fine, bro. Zach said, I've been running a restaurant across the street for decades, and we've never faced such a shame. Samantha, the waiter, said, I didn't touch the food, I just served it, sir. Can you guess what happened here? Zach paid Peter and the fake doctor to ruin Rick and Kelly's reputation. He handed them cash earlier that evening. Despite the dramatic opening, the business was doing fine. Kelly and Rick were very happy. One day, a furious lady entered the restaurant holding her little daughter in her arms. She pointed at three customers and yelled, It's her father! The first customer said, I've been in the army in another country for the last two years, lady. I just returned. The second one said, I don't know you, miss. You won't get my money. Find another fool. And the third customer said, I can't be your father. I'm a woman. Can you tell me who the real father is? It's the second guy. Take a closer look at his face. The daughter and the guy have the same eye color. What a dramatic restaurant! Fake poisonings and paternities. Hey, time to book a table. Rachel had been dreaming of becoming a famous actress. Finally, her dream was about to come true. A famed talent agency had invited Rachel for an interview. She arrived at the office to meet her new agent early in the morning. There were four people in the conference room. Can you tell which one is Rachel's agent?
This guy is the only person who doesn't have an employee badge, so he's probably a guest. This man is wearing a classy expensive suit, but he brought coffee for everyone, so he's an assistant. This lady's mug says, world's best lawyer, so she's probably responsible for legal issues. And this relaxed lady over there is Rachel's agent, Zoe. Zoe offered Rachel to take a seat. Which place should Rachel choose? This chair is missing one leg. Someone has spilled coffee on this chair. The barista has written the boss on the drink in this cup and left it on the table next to this chair. And someone has left a sweater on this chair. So Rachel has only one option, and here it is. First of all, Zoe decided to check how smart Rachel was and offered her this puzzle. She used three pencils to make this triangle. Rachel's task was to create a perfect square by moving just one pencil. Can you help her? Here's the answer. After the meeting, Zoe unboxed a delivery from a popular writer. He sent Zoe his new masterpiece in secret. Zoe didn't say anything about this to her colleagues, but one of them was actually trying to steal the script. Can you guess who this person is? It's the assistant. He's using his front camera to take pictures of the mirrored ceiling while Zoe is looking through the script. Zoe brought Rachel to her first audition. Rachel joined other actresses in a line. They were all competing for the lead role in a new series. The main character had poor eyesight, so all actresses put on fake glasses to get into character. Rachel didn't do well enough, and another actress, Sally, got the job. Rachel was very upset. But suddenly, Sally fell to the floor. She was unconscious, and Rachel called an ambulance. Doctors said that someone had poisoned Sally. But all the actresses ate the same snacks and drank the same water. Doctors checked the food, and it was fine. Can you guess what happened there? This actress gave Sally a wet wipe to clean her glasses. The wipe was poisoned. The next day, Rachel arrived at a theater to meet Stan. He was a famous director. She noticed five weird things about this place right away. What about you? Can you see them too? Something's wrong with the gravity. In particular, with this chandelier that isn't hanging from the ceiling as it should. The wind that the fan creates is blowing to the right, but this actress's hair is flowing to the left. There are human footsteps on the ceiling. The spotlights are red, but the lighting on the stage is blue. And this ballerina's shadow is falling in the wrong direction. Stan introduced Rachel to his favorite actors, Josh, Steven, and Tyler. They were triplets that always joked around. But this time, they agreed that one of them would tell the truth, and the other two would lie. They told Rachel about their game. She had to guess their names. The first guy said that he was Josh. The second introduced himself as Steven. And the third guy said, the second person always tells the truth. Can you figure out who is who? If the third guy is telling the truth, then so is the second. But only one brother was supposed to be honest. So the third guy must be lying. This means the second brother is lying too. So then, the first guy must be telling the truth. He is Josh. The second guy is neither Josh nor Steven. He's Tyler. And the third brother is Steven. Stan offered Rachel to play a princess in his new production. Rachel went to the dressing room to apply makeup. Suddenly, she heard a scream. Rachel ran out of the room and saw the main star of the play on the stage covered in paint. Rachel questioned the suspects. Ron, an assistant, claimed that he'd been eating his sandwich on the balcony when it happened. Lily, a stylist, was on the phone with her husband. And Stacy, a cleaner, said she'd been cleaning the bathroom at that moment. Who's guilty?
Ron, he's holding a sandwich, and it's still unwrapped. Now that Rachel got a job, she needed a place to stay in Hollywood. She started looking for an apartment and went to three agencies. Each agency showed her one apartment. Rachel liked them all, but when she examined the apartments, she realized that there were scammers among the realtors. Rachel looked at the documents attentively. Which apartment should she choose? Rachel chose the third option. The first apartment is on the sixth floor, but that's impossible because the building only has five floors. And according to the description of the second apartment, its construction will be finished in 2025. This is 2022, by the way. But Rachel needs an apartment immediately. Rachel rented the third apartment and moved in right away. But something was wrong with the bathroom there. Can you see it? How is she supposed to flush? Can you see anything weird here? There's no shower drain. Rachel heard the doorbell ring. Her neighbors, Peter and Victor, brought her two cakes, but only one of them was edible. Can you tell which one? Victor's cake is sprinkled with almond flakes, while Peter's cake is decorated with human nails. The next day, Zoe texted Rachel to check how she was doing. Rachel sent her this selfie and said, Alone at home, learning my lines. Zoe sent Rachel this reply, What a liar you are! Why? If Rachel's alone, who's that guy? Zoe took Rachel to a party and introduced her to Nick, an eccentric billionaire who was financing one of Zoe's movie projects. They had a brief conversation, and then Rachel lost him in the crowd. In a while, Rachel noticed three guys facing away from her. Each of them looked exactly like Nick. Can you tell who the real Nick is? This guy has a tattoo on his hand, while Nick didn't have it. And this guy's suit is fake. They wrote the brand name with a mistake. Nick offered for Rachel to sing karaoke. The girl sang a song, and Nick liked it so much that he offered her a suitcase full of gold. But he wouldn't reward just anyone. Only smart people deserved his money. To get the gold, Rachel had to crack a riddle. Nick showed her four rare coins. He said there was something wrong with three of them. Can you figure out which coin is real? People who lived at that time didn't call their era BCE. This coin is from the future. Take a look at the date. There weren't cars in 1365. So here's the only real coin. Rachel used an app to call a taxi to take her precious suitcase home. She saw three identical cars in the parking lot. Each of the three drivers claimed that Rachel had ordered their car. Which driver should Rachel choose? The third one. Take a look at the first taxi. There's a creepy guy hiding in the back seat. And the second car is missing a wheel. Zoe was having a party at her villa. She noticed that her son, Harry, was eating in his room with some lady. But Zoe didn't know who she was. The woman got very curious. So after they left, she sneaked into her son's room to find some hints. There were three girls at her party, Lily, Jennifer, and Diana. Zoe immediately guessed who was with her son. What about you? Harry is dating Jennifer. Look at the dishes on the table. There's a lipstick stain on the fork. Jennifer is the only girl wearing red lipstick. In the morning, Rachel went for a run in the park. On her way there, 
she met this woman. And a minute later, she saw another woman, absolutely the same. Rachel thought it was extremely bizarre. But, in reality, there were five differences between these two ladies. Can you see them? Here they are. Rachel continued her run and saw these two guys on a boat in the river. And a couple of minutes later, she noticed these fishermen. Can you spot any differences? There are five differences between these two pictures. Have you found them all? Rachel stopped because she needed to tie her shoelaces. Suddenly, she saw these two women with backpacks. Uh -oh. Can you spot five differences between them? Right, here they are. Rachel arrived at her apartment building and found her neighbor, Peter, unconscious at the bottom of the stairs. The scene in front of her eyes was oh, no. so awful that Rachel fainted and the concierge carried her home. In the evening, after her nap, Rachel left her apartment. And guess what? In the lobby, she came across Peter again. But this time, he was energetic and happy. He was also drinking some juice. How did he survive? Look, he's a vampire! In the morning, Zoe called Rachel and asked her to come to the agency immediately. When Rachel saw oh, the no. office, she was shocked. It was a mess. Someone had stained the walls with paint, and broken furniture and torn documents were everywhere. Zoe questioned three suspects. Dan, an assistant, said that he'd been partying all night. Many people could confirm that. Jessica, a lawyer, said, Who do you think I am? I love my job. Otherwise, I would have already quit. And Sarah, a copywriter, said that she'd been the last one to leave the office. And she had locked the door, that's for sure. Who's lying? Jessica. All the mugs are broken, except for hers. World's best lawyer. The woman wanted to get rid of some documents. So she faked a robbery. Susie writes scary tales, but her own life is rather boring. She lives alone with her cats. How many cats does Susie have? Can you count? That's right, 12. This cat on the shelf is a statuette. Susie had just finished writing her new novel and went to meet with her agent, Harry. Susie found him unconscious in his office. The police questioned three suspects. The cleaner said he'd been washing windows in Harry's office all morning. At that time, Harry was feeling perfectly fine. Sarah, another author, had an important business lunch outside the office. And George, also a writer, was writing a new novel at home. Who's lying? The cleaner. If he washed the windows, why are they so dirty? Susie returned home and went to bed. But in the middle of the night, strange sounds woke her up. She saw three g -g -g ghosts in the middle of her bedroom. She noticed that one of the ghosts wasn't real and asked him to stop fooling around. Which ghost is fake? This guy over here. He's not transparent and he's casting a shadow. The fake ghost took off his mask and costume. As soon as Susie saw his face, she started screaming. Why? Look at this poster on the wall. The guy looks exactly like the character from the cover of one of Susie's novels. Alex, is that you? Susie asked. Alex said, yes, and I need your help. My world is in danger. Susie was willing to help him, but first she wanted Alex to crack a riddle. I'm something people love or hate. I change people's appearances and thoughts. If a person takes care of themselves, I increase. I fool some people. To others, I am a mystery. Some people try to hide me, but I still show. And no matter how hard people try, I never go down. What am I? 
Alex answered correctly. Together, they entered a portal that had opened in Susie's mirror. What was his reply? It's age. Susie found herself inside her own scary tail. In front of the main gates leading to Ghost Town, skeletons stopped Susie and Alex. They said, If you want to enter the town, you have to guess our riddle first. Why are skeletons so chill? Susie gave the right answer, and they passed through. What did she say? because nothing gets under their skin. Susie and Alex walked up to an old castle where a werewolf and a beauty lived. The locals said the girl didn't actually want to live there. The beauty invited Susie and Alex to the castle and said, my husband will be here soon, you have to hide. They hid in the basement and locked the door. But in the middle of the night, the werewolf managed to open the door and charged at them. How did the werewolf find them? The beauty was the werewolf. Susie and Alex ran away from the werewolf's castle and hid in a small cabin. But it was a trap. Someone locked the door from the outside. The walls of the cabin began to move. The pair had only 30 seconds to choose the right door to escape. The first door led to a tunnel with dangerous snakes and scorpions. There was a tiny wooden elevator behind the second door. And there was hot lava behind the third door. Which door should they choose? The second one. Although the elevator is small, they can still fit in together and escape from the creepy cabin. Susie and Alex got outside and saw a suspicious vampire. But he said, No worries, I won't bite you if you manage to solve my riddle. I run through hills, I veer around mountains, I leap over rivers and crawl through forests. Step out of your door to find me. What am I? Alex answered, and the vampire had to let them go. What did he say? I'm a road. The two were walking through a forest and came across two women. Alex whispered into Susie's ear, be careful, one of them is a ghost. Which one is it? This lady over there, she doesn't have a shadow. Susie and Alex continued their crazy quest and met three friends on a beach. One of these guys was a werewolf. Can you guess which one? This guy, look at his footprints. He's turned into a human only recently. Susie and Alex decided to have a picnic on this romantic beach. Suddenly, they heard singing. A mermaid hypnotized them with her beautiful voice and took them to her underwater kingdom. When Susie woke up, she asked the mermaid to let them go. The magical creature answered, I will let you go if you help me cut this cake into four pieces with only two cuts. Have you figured out how to do it? First, they should cut the cake in half. Now they need to cut the cake sideways through the middle so that it has two layers. Now the cake is divided into four pieces with only two cuts. The mermaid let them go. As soon as Susie and Alex got to the shore, they saw flames. Ms. Adams' warehouse was on fire. The locals caught three suspects. These people were near the warehouse when the fire started. But the police didn't find any matches or a lighter anywhere. Can you help Susie understand who the criminal is? There he is. He used his glasses and the sun's rays to start the fire. Sometime later, Susie and Alex met an elegant princess. She was crying because someone had stolen all her jewelry. She wanted to find the thief immediately. Alex questioned the neighbors. 
I was on the second floor when I heard someone break in. They stole all the money from my safe, too, Ms. Skeleton said. Another neighbor, Ms. Monster, said that someone had taken away her priceless antique vase. Susie knew for sure that one of the ladies was lying. After all, she had written this story. But Alex couldn't figure out who the thief was. Can you help him? It was Ms. Skeleton. She said she was on the second floor, but her house is a one-story building. An elf called Derek came up to Susie and asked her for help. He hadn't seen his girlfriend Fiona for two weeks. He was afraid that something terrible could have happened to her. Susie and Alex went to the address Derek had given them. Fiona ran a cute magic goods store, but the local said that she had a secret room for black magic rituals in the basement of her store. Can you see any clues or secret doors? This painting on the wall is hanging straight, but there are scratches on the wall, as if someone had been moving the painting lots of times. Susie and Alex moved the painting too, and this opened a secret door. They went downstairs and found the room. They looked through Fiona's magical tools and notes and found out that she had been working on a recipe for an immortality potion. The last record in her notes was this. Today I'm gonna test my potion on myself. They saw a suspicious door with a huge lock at the back of the lab. Alex broke the door down and they saw Fiona sitting on a chair, unconscious. She was holding an empty bottle. What happened there? Did Fiona fail her experiment? Or did someone help her? Someone else has definitely been here. If Fiona had simply fainted, she wouldn't have been able to lock the door. Alex brought Fiona to a hospital. He noticed three people in the hall, but something seemed a little weird to him. What is it? This doctor's first aid kit has the wrong image on it. Alex confessed to Susie that he liked her and asked her out. They went on a date to a local concert hall. Suddenly, they noticed a pianist lying unconscious on the stage. He was holding a note in his hand. The police immediately questioned the suspects. The conductor said he'd been talking to journalists in his room. The janitor said he'd been cleaning the lobby. And the flutist was practicing for the concert. Who's guilty? The flutist. This note is a rebus riddle that says flute. Susie and Alex went to a magic show. The magician claimed he could read anyone's mind with his fingers. Susie didn't believe him. I can prove it, the magician said, and asked for two volunteers. Susie and a girl called Amy went to the stage and wrote their thoughts on two pieces of paper. They rolled them up and put them in the magician's hat. The man took out the first note and said, Get ready to see some real magic. Someone loves a guy named Mike. And that was exactly what Amy thought. Everybody was shocked and began to applaud. The magician unrolled the first piece of paper and put it aside. Then he pulled the second one out and said, Susie doesn't believe in my magic. And that was the correct answer too. But Susie knew the magician was cheating. How? The second volunteer was fake. The magician already knew what she had written. That's why he said her phrase first. Then he unfolded Susie's piece of paper, memorized the text, and said it later. The magician was very offended so he called the show's acrobats to take revenge. The acrobats grabbed Susie and Alex and made them participate in a creepy survival game. Susie and Alex had to walk over a glass bridge. One wrong step, and they'd fall down where the hungry lions were already waiting for them. But if they succeeded in this challenge, Alex would turn into a real person. Half of the glass slabs that made up this bridge were very fragile, but the rest of them were very strong. How could Susie and Alex get to the other side and stay alive?
they need to crawl close to the middle of the bridge, along the metal beams. Next morning, Susie woke up in her bedroom. She yelled, Oh my, it was just a dream. But it wasn't. How can you tell? Alex's shirt is hanging on Susie's chair. Lily had problems at college because her logical thinking was weak. One day, her teacher said, I'll give you one last riddle. If you fail, I will expel you from college. Ah. A farmer had 17 cows. All but five escaped. How many cows does the farmer have now? Lily didn't manage to give a correct answer. Can you do it? The riddle said all but five escaped, which means all others except the five cows escaped. So the farmer has five cows now. It's tricky because it's too simple. The teacher kicked Lily out of college. She was collecting her stuff in her dorm room and crying. Suddenly, a letter flew into her window. It was an invitation to study at the School of Magic addressed to her. At the bottom of the letter, she saw this code and the words, See you there! Lily got very excited. She packed her backpack and ran away. Where did she run to? She ran to the library. In the library, Lily met a weird guy looking like a wizard. He opened three magical portals, but only one of them was safe. The first portal leads inside a massive black hole. The second portal will bring her to the year 9999. And the third portal leads to a group of ghosts. If Lily chooses the right way, she will get to the School of Magic. Which portal should she choose? The third one. Ghosts can be scary, but they're usually not dangerous, while the first two options are too risky. Lily found herself in a beautiful, snowy forest. Suddenly, four male ghosts surrounded her and said, We'll show you the way to your new school if you spot one fake ghost among us. Can you help Lily find the fake? There it is! Ghosts don't breathe. The ghost took Lily to a castle. When she entered its hall, she faced four female ghosts. They surrounded her and said, We'll show you the way to the principal's office if you guess which one of us isn't a ghost. Did you figure it out? This lady has a shadow. Lily entered the office and noticed five ghosts there. They asked her the same riddle and promised to show her a secret door. Can you spot the pretender? It's this guy right here. Ghosts don't eat. Lily opened a secret door and met three women. But only one of them is the principal. Can you guess who? It's the second lady. Her jacket is hanging on the principal's chair. The principal greeted Lily and offered her to solve a riddle right away. There are two rows of potion bottles on two shelves. Lily has to move just one bottle on the top row so that they'll be in the same order as the bottles in the bottom row. Can you help her? Pour the potion from the first bottle into the fourth bottle and move the now empty bottle all the way to the right. The principal congratulated Lily on getting accepted to the School of Magic yes! and asked the ghost to show her the dorm room. Lily fell asleep very quickly. But in the middle of the night, she woke up floating out of her window. Two students prepared a welcome prank for her. <laughs> Lily found herself on a castle roof. Whoa! The two students in masks said, We'll set you free if you guess this riddle. There are four frogs in the vertical row and five frogs in the horizontal row. Lily has to move just one frog so that there are five frogs in each row. Can you help her? Yep, just like that. Easy. The students wrote five words in the air using their magic wands. Then they asked Lily to take a look at the words and find the odd one out. Can you name it?
The board doesn't belong here because it doesn't form a word if you read it backward. The wizards opened a portal and pushed Lily inside. The portal took her to a creepy basement where Lily found three doors. There's a wild jungle with a hungry gorilla behind the first door. Behind the second door, there's a river with wild alligators waiting to eat Lily. And there's a huge angry cobra behind the third door. Which way should Lily go? She should pick the first one. She can distract the gorilla with all these bananas. Next morning, Lily went to her first class. But someone locked the door. Lily pushed the door and noticed a screen with a riddle. It said, Find an odd detail out and I'll let you in. Can you see it? This one is not an S. Lily opened the door and faced another door with a similar riddle. Can you help her? This guy doesn't belong here. The last door offered Lily this riddle. In two seconds, she entered the classroom and started her studies. What detail did she notice? This one right here. During the class, a teacher offered Lily to find three differences between these two pictures. Can you see them? That's right, here they are. How about these images? Can you see three differences? Hmm, I didn't see this one coming. Can you help Lily spot three differences here? Good job! I hope you got them all. Lily came to the dining room for lunch. Plates full of food appeared out of the air. But Lily's classmate, Mike, warned her that only one dish is actually edible. Can you help Lily figure out which one? This delicious-looking spaghetti has rusty nails in it. This food isn't even real. Take a look, it's translucent. This salad contains worms. Ew. And this taco looks pretty good. After lunch, Lily had a botany lesson. The teacher went to the garden to pick fruits from one apple tree and prepare a special healing potion. The tree has 18 branches. Each branch has exactly 14 boughs. Each bough has 7 twigs. And each twig has two fruits. How many oranges will the teacher pick? Lily instantly gave the correct answer. Can you name it? The teacher won't bring any oranges. They don't grow on apple trees. Lily went apple picking with Mike. On the way back, they met four of their classmates. There were only five apples in the basket. Lily had to divide them equally between the students. But one apple had to remain in the basket she'd bring to class. How would she divide the apples? She can give four apples to the classmates, leaving one apple in the basket for Mike, and then walk to class with Mike. In the evening, Lily found one of her roommates unconscious in the backyard. The principal questioned three suspects. Mike went to bed early, and loud noises woke him up. Leah was watching her favorite show. She didn't go outside at all. Kelly was carving pumpkins to spice up the living room, and she didn't see anything suspicious. Who's lying? Looks like Kelly is lying. The room isn't decorated, and the pumpkins aren't finished. Next day, Lily opened her closet and noticed that her favorite dress was missing. She spoke to three of her roommates. Leah said she'd spent all morning in the library. Kelly confessed that she had been on a secret date. And Vanessa despises all clothes from the human world. She doesn't even come close to it. Who's lying? Vanessa is lying. Look at her hat. It's made from the same fabric as Lily's dress. If human clothing is so disgusting to her, why does she wear it herself? 
Mike learned a new spell and turned his textbook into a fancy car. He invited Lily for a ride. Three people were hitchhiking at a gas station. All of them looked pretty suspicious. Who should Lily and Mike give a ride to? This man doesn't cast a shadow. He's a vampire. This lady was bitten by a vampire. She'll soon turn into a vampire too. So it's not safe to offer her a ride. And this guy is just an ordinary man. Oh yeah. Lily entered a classroom and received a new riddle. Oh yes. Four wizards are lined up on some steps. They're all facing the same direction. A wall separates the fourth wizard from the remaining three. The first wizard can see the second and third wizard. The second wizard can only see the third one. The third wizard can see none of the others. And the fourth wizard can't see any of the others either. All wizards are wearing hats. They are told there are two white hats and two black hats. The wizards initially don't know what color hat they're wearing. Their task is to shout out the color of the hat they are wearing as soon as they know for certain what color it is. They're not allowed to turn around or move. They're not allowed to talk to each other or take their hats off. Who is the first person to shout out and why? The second wizard will shout out the answer after some time. Here's why. Wizards 3 and 4 cannot see the other's hats. Wizard 1 sees a white hat and a black hat and knows his hat can be black or white. Wizard 2 sees one black hat, but if he's also wearing a black hat, it would be obvious to Wizard 1 that he's wearing a white hat. Since Wizard 1 didn't shout out, Wizard 2 concluded that he himself was wearing a white hat. Lily, Mike, Leah, and Mason were having a party in Mike's room to celebrate successfully passing a test. The next day, they found Mike unconscious, and none of his friends knew what had happened to him. When the principal showed up, she saw a note next to Mike's calendar. It read 3, 4, 9, 10, 11. That very second, the principal knew who did it. What about you? It was Mason. The note was next to a calendar. Take the first three letters, transform them into months, and you get Mason. 3 equals March, 4 stands for April, 9 means September, 10 equals October, and 11 is November.